inhabitants of Kate Trees. This is Judge Dredd. The Casey people have forgotten. This is Lock operates under the same rules as the rest of the city. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Mama is a common criminal. Guilty of murder. Guilty of the manufacture and distribution of the narcotic known as slow-mo. And as of now, under sentence of death. Any who obstruct me in carrying out my duty will be treated as an accessory to our crimes. You have been warned. And as for you, Mama. Judgment time. No plans to travel, but had to renew my passport today and Danzig's because uh, we, <laughs> we got him a passport right after the 2016 election with just in case we need to leave the country. Yeah. You know, when people were still not sure how shitty it would fucking get. I'm still not sure how shitty it's going to get. Who fucking knows? I mean, we're close to the Judge Dredd timeline. <laughs> yeah kind of i've 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 got a somewhat extensive judge dread timeline at least more about the world and some about him that goes from 2023 to about 2113 so i, I don't know if uh throw that in somewhere at the beginning uh of the of the discussion but man it it, it's, it makes me want to read more of the comic yeah i'm kind of bummed i didn't get a chance to read as much as i'd hoped i, I signed up for digital copies of 2000 ad and i haven't had a chance to fucking read them yet the holidays kind of ate up a bunch of my free time and i just didn't get around to it but uh yeah it's uh <laughs> It's looking more and more like Mega City One. The it's like the not too distant future. Uh, there, there will be some things. I don't know if you looked into the history much, but there's there will probably be a few things that I read off that you'll just be like, "There it is." You're rolling, aren't you? I am. Let me do one more thing that would get me two years mandatory minimum in an ISO cube, and I am ready <laughs> to go. So yeah, here we are. Another day in America. I am Darren. And with me as usual in this, whatever we want to call it, is my dear friend Mark. How are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing good. I just realized that we're like four episodes into this thing. We still have a name for it. So, eh, whatever. The, the comic book shows on the Psycho Semantic cast. That's, that's what it's known as now. But, uh, yeah, we're... We're not talking about a Marvel movie. I, I I don't even want to know like how many people drop their fucking their immediately after seeing it in the theater hot take podcast on the new Spider Man movie, but uh I bet it's a lot. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot. I, I think I've seen at least two or three episodes drop already. Which not to besmirch these people, I get it. Like everyone wants to, you know, get their first opinion out there, but uh yeah a lot of people saw the new spider-man movie weekend before last or whenever it came out uh here in the last couple weeks i did not i saw encanto about the magic the magic people in colombia but so that on the d plus yeah and the one girl that has super strength they had to fight to make her muscly so disney's still kind of uh... disney yeah, Disney gonna Disney. I, I went and saw the new Spider-Man movie, and really the only reason I did is because I already had fucking COVID in November, so uh, I wasn't super worried about that. We we saw it in a kind of uh, a limited seat kind of theater. It's it's like a good it's the biggest screen in either town or the entire state, and it's a curved screen. 
arc kind of deal. But well, yeah, I think the I think the theater only seats like about thirty people, and I actually saw a lot of empty seats when I went on opening night. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I don't know, people cheered, stuff happened. <laughs> it's it kind of neat. Uh, I will say this: it made me want to go back and watch all the other ones. So I dug out. I for whatever reason didn't own any copies of the uh, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies. But Megan did, so I went over to look on her shelf and I pulled them out. And they're full screen DVDs that probably came out like the year after the movies came out. I've been fucking so spoiled watching beautiful 4K <laughs> Blu-rays and widescreen and remastered from the negative. And then I'm watching this shit and I'm just like, God damn it, I know. <laughs> Why do you got to cut off the ends of my fucking... Uh, it's just, the full screen should have never been an option. Let the people at the video store widen when they come back and they're like, I don't understand why there's black bars above the screen in my movie. And I don't even know how I used to explain that when I worked there when I was like 18 at the, at the old Blockbuster. But anyway, fuck full screen. Uh, so I ordered, you can get all three of those Sam Raimi movies on Blu-ray for like 20 bucks on on the online. So uh, I got those ordered. And uh, yeah, those were interesting to revisit. The first one's really good. The second two are have some absolute fucking dog shit and I kind of think. And there's Bonesaw and <laughs> and Toby Maguire and fucking uh what's his face? The the uh one of the bully the guy that plays Flash is in True Blood. As a, oh, yeah. as a werewolf. Don't remember his name, but I, I think he runs like the the nerdy famous dude Dungeons and Dragons uh, game in Hollywood with it's like uh, uh, jo- Joe Montaliago or something Monta something. I, I can't I can't remember how to pronounce his last name but yeah I know the dude you're talking about yeah Manganiello maybe yeah not Joe Montaigne which you didn't say but which my brain <laughs> and not uh, Joe Montana right. And uh, the th- but the third Spider Man, because the second Spider Man has Doc Ock, which yeah, is, which is kinda, fun. It's kind of more of the same with a different bad guy. It, yes, but then yeah, the third one took a dive in my eyes. I didn't really <laughs> care so that silly. much about the Sandman I'm... or the emo screamo Tobey Maguire McGu- <laughs> dancing and. <laughs> no. Just do another stuff. I don't know. I it's it's still I, I bad all these years later. Okay. It, it never became like it never became like cute or funny or ironic or anything. I think it's just god fucking awful. So I, I'm glad you know the, the, that wasn't the last thing I saw Tobey Maguire do, which I think was the fake movie trailer in Tropic Thunder, where it, uh. God, it's been a long time since I've seen that one either. It's it's one of those movie one of the movie trailers for the Robert Downey Jr. character where they play monks that want to fuck each other, and they're like playing with each other's rosary beads, and they're just totally playing on it. in a world where you couldn't love anyone. These two <laughs> men found, you know. I would I would definitely uh, recommend checking that movie back out again for a good laugh. Yeah, I know I saw it when it came out, but I'll be fucked if I can remember hardly much about it. I remember Tom Cruise, <laughs> but <laughs> Tom other Cruise, than that, Matthew McConaughey as his desperate as Ben Stiller's desperate agent. Um, what Robert Downey Jr. plays the guy that's so method he dyed his skin black to play the character from the book. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll see how I can bring this back. Yeah. We were talking about Disney and uh their their ownership of some of the Spider Man movies. We are talking about another all powerful entity that starts with a D with Dread, two thousand twelve's <laughs> Dread. There it there, is. There it is. Uh, a movie that I hadn't really thought about doing uh, on, on on the regular feed or anything like that before. I hadn't seen it since it came out. And I was saving the other one because I, I know a judge. And it, we've 
ever since I started the show, and they is really into comic books. So they keeps, we keep talking about doing it and, you know, disguising they voice and not getting into anything that's like a breach of ethics or anything like that, which right. I'm sure I've probably needed to offer the same service to other guests so they don't get in trouble with their jobs about <laughs> changing their voice or whatever. But it hasn't lined up and they does want to do the first one so it doesn't feel like cheating. And they just recently moved up to a higher position of judge, making it less likely that I'll get to come on the show. <laughs> Great. Um, but I won't say who it is. I fucked up by saying they, but that's a lot of judges. They. They. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say they and then just cut it out and hit, play it over all the other times I said the <laughs> other thing. They. They. <laughs> they, 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 that that poor bastard who will have to sit through the, the the Sylvester Stallone Judge Dredd movie, which I have not seen since I was a little kid. I remember watching it when it came out, and uh, I didn't, I didn't really think it was good then either. Like I don't think, like I'm, uh, I don't know. That's another thing I had intended to do before uh, doing this show is watching the original just quickly to you know see how it holds up. I'm sure it holds up badly. And it was just like a horrible misguided mess kind of. So I feel a little bad for for your friend they judge that might have to sit through that piece of shit. But uh yeah, we got we got the good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they wanted to do that because they are so familiar with the comic book that it would be a better anvil for the hammer of knowledge. Right. Because one thing, I, I guess, I, you know how we talk about shit on here. I do have a timeline I was telling you before we got on there. That I do have a timeline for the Mega City world, but I don't know when this dread takes place. It specifically, I don't think they really say specifically, but it is sometime after I would say twenty one oh one. That sounds sounds about right to me. That's kind of the tricky thing about it is like they intentionally, at least in the twenty twelve movie they intentionally design things to be like futuristic but not like super futuristic like kind of why they all ride like motorcycles and stuff and the cars look like relatively like they haven't changed much since like nowadays a hundred years previous but yeah on the some of the extras of the the dread blu-ray they were talking about and they, they wanted it to be kind of familiar so that like it's a little more believable i guess i'm not sure what the logic was but uh it looks cool well, I think Alex Garland, who wrote the screenplay and did a lot of the editing, and I think Carl Urban once said, I don't know how seriously, that he was more of a director of the movie than Pete Travis. But I think Trav Pete Travis and Alex Garland came out with a statement that they had come up with some odd collaboration agreement and... Garland did not seek anything close to being said co-directed by or anything like that. Ah. But ah. they were very involved. They wrote a bunch of different versions of the script. Uh, one of the versions of the script had to do with Judge Death. Do you, did, are you familiar with that character? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, before we get too much further, I'll say that I'm a pretty... Uh, I've known about Judge Dredd, like, most of my, you know, ever since the Stallone movie came out for sure, but I'm not super well versed in the comics. I kind of had to do a little catching up on this one. I watched the documentary uh, Future Shock that's about the 2000 AD comics, which is where, Ju where, where Judge Dredd first appears. Um, in the late but, 70s, right? That was the first appearance? Yeah, yeah. That's when, yeah, that's when the first bit of 2000 AD came out. And a lot of, that was like a company that I think was formed by a lot of uh fairly cynical comic book artists that had been kind of chewed up and spat out by uh british comics of the time like in that documentary they go into it like a lot of uh like comics for boys i guess specifically stuff like action comics was uh kind of uh its popularity was waning and comics were in kind of a stagnant kind of shitty place and then out fucking 
starting a mosh pit, beating up all of its fucking nerdy friends comes 2000 AD comics, which uh, if I had to describe it like real briefly, I would call it like, uh, I mean, it's basically like punk rock Marvel. If like, uh, uh, <laughs> like if alternative tentacles records put out comics or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. It's, it's the, the baby brother label that will never be as, big but also doesn't like have to play by the rules and can do fairly weird stupid sometimes subversive stuff uh which which judge dread definitely is i think kind of the message behind judge dread goes over a lot of people's heads at least like i, I don't know like when when this movie initially came out and hearing people talk about it uh, like my friends and stuff. Like, I mean, if you if you're at least a little bit savvy, you can tell that the whole thing is a huge satire and a huge statement about fascism and living in a fucking police state and basically having all of your constitutional rights like taken away by law enforcement in the blink of a fucking eye. Uh, it's kind of about stuff like that. It's it's like it's not just you know dumb macho Judge Dredd's so cool because he shoots people kind of shit. There's, there's, there's a little bit of deepness to it, but uh. Yeah, I think the Stallone movie helped that idea come along because it was, I don't know, a, a couple of things that stood out in my revisiting of that one is, you know, I do not miss seeing Rob Schneider everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't miss that. And Judge Dredd in the Stallone one is always fucking taking off his helmet. Yep. And he hasn't taken it off in how what is how old is the comic? Uh, Forty something years. Forty five next year, I think. And Dredd has never taken off his helmet, as far as I've I'm aware. I think that's no. a big a big thing. Although that one did try to be funny. And this one this one <laughs> it's a not bloody, so much. Yeah. This is a bloody fucking R rated for adults kind of movie, which I mean, it makes sense. I don't know how many like kids nowadays are reading the 2000 AD comics. Probably some, but not like, uh, you know, not like the amount of kids that are going to line up to see a big budget Sylvester Stallone action movie. That's kind of the thing with that one too. Is like, I mean, it's not even smart enough to be a satire of big dumb action movies at the time. It just <laughs> becomes one. So, yeah, Last Action Hero is a better satire of those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I was really. I guess the other thing we should talk about is uh, so this was released theatrically in the U.S. by Lionsgate. <laughs> I've never really heard or understood why this had such a dismal fucking release that it like instantly bombed and was out of theaters within like a week. I don't know what it was opening against that weekend or what the fucking story on that is, but like this movie tank super hard in theaters it's not even according to wikipedia i think the budget was, it was like somewhere between 30 and 45 million which is not a ton of money that's like upper tier for like a mid-budget kind of movie uh but i don't know not like a huge loss but for whatever reason nobody fucking showed up to see this opening weekend so they pulled it from theaters pretty fast i mean well i will say i didn't go see it I wasn't going to see a lot of movie. Well, actually, I'll take that back. 2012. Uh, that that was the year that I finished college. I went back and finished college, so I wasn't going to movies. I was. Like, I, think I was. I was either still working at the TV station, or oh boy, my phone's trying to <laughs> restart for an update. Don't do that. Uh, in 2012, I think I was either just being done working at the. Uh, the tv stations and moved into my illustrious career in safety or i might have just started off as working in safety i'm gonna look up the box office for 2012 because now i'm really curious what else came out that year that might have been whipping ass it was reviewed well by the critics and it what pre premiered at not ever well i don't know if the premiere was it it played at tiff and it played at Fantastic Fest. I remember seeing that. Yeah, which that was a that was a couple of years at least before I started going to Fantastic Fest. But man, I would have fucking loved to have seen this one with one of those crowds. Like people probably went nuts for it. 
so the top grossing movie of 2012 was The Avengers. Speaking of comic book movies, I'm not sure where that came out, but I'm sure as soon as it, I think it came out in the summertime, probably, and I'm sure in August or September or whenever this, whenever Dread came out, it was still kind of whipping ass. Uh, number four was the first Hobbit movie, which made over a billion dollars. Uh, there's still a Twilight movie playing, uh, Spider Man movie, Men in Black. This was the year Django and Chain came out, and Prometheus. Um, so yeah oh the dark knight rises too i think came out like around the same time as this so like everybody went for, went to that for their their comic book movie i'm thinking so um yeah pretty heavy competition that might also have something to do with it but yeah also they didn't like spend a whole lot of money on advertising or anything it didn't seem like because hardly anybody like this is definitely a, like a word of mouth kind of thing They're like i know this the stallone one kind of sucks uh, but this one is different. They dropped a lot of the goofiness. It's super fucking bloody and is kind of just a great adaption of the character, like better than the way better than the Stallone movie. From my understanding, Urban played true to type off camera to try to stay in character. He tried not to smile at all. <laughs> uh, there was one story about somebody telling a joke and him just staring at him like judge dread then he apolo- and then he apologized and he felt bad and after <laughs> after he found out he uh I forget, he, he did tried to do something nice to apologize cuz Carl Urban is a goofy fucking guy I've become more of a fan of him over the years I'm a big fan of the boys uh, he's a blast in that I've still not and not gotten around to watching the boys oh dude just watch the first episode, and then you'll have to watch the next couple. They're a blast. I, I will definitely say you want to see satire of uh, superheroes and gore and shit. There it is. Yep. yep. These are these are all things I enjoy. So, yeah, I mean, I mean the movie, it's dark, it's fast, it's bloody, it's it's dark again. It's uh, <laughs> pretty simple. It's it's. It, I was getting some vibes, sort of, of the remake of Assault of Precinct on Precinct Thirteen that we talked about before. Yeah, it's a little bit that. Uh, I think the one that a lot of people compared it to at the time was the Raid. There you go. Like to the point where people were like basically accusing the script of Dread for as just being a giant ripoff of the Raid, even though I'm sure. They were being developed at like almost the exact same time because that's another movie that came out in 2012. Is when the states got got the raid, which I think is also a Lionsgate movie, if I'm not mistaken. I think they put both of those out. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's basically Dredge shows up in a place. He's got to fucking shoot a zillion bad guys and climb like a tower until he gets to the head bad guy, and <laughs> that's that's it in a nutshell. It's like a video game or a comic book or something. It's, it's not a lot to it, but uh they they do all of it really well and yeah it's it's got like such a i think it's this is close to two hours too like it, it doesn't feel long at all because like the whole the whole time once it gets going it doesn't doesn't really let up ever but uh yeah i'd kind of forgotten about all the slow motion in this movie i'm kind of obsessed with fucking slow motion stuff and i was delighted to hear that they used the same kind of cameras to do those shots it's called a phantom uh, they make like a, you, you can actually own one. I've seen them pop up on eBay for like somewhere between, between like 10 and $20,000, somewhere around in there. It might've been a little bit more, but uh, they make like closer to consumer grade cameras that you can buy that do uh, like a million frames per second or like some, something. I, I, I think there's like nicer ones where you can do like even more insane shit. There's a pretty great YouTube channel called the slow-mo guys that have been around forever uh but yeah that's that, that's what they shoot their stuff on primarily too is a phantom uh but yeah it's 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 super cool uh, i i the blu-ray i have of this is does have a 3d function that's kind of another thing that i think is a little bit unique about this movie and uh this is one of the few movies that like uh you know you could tell like probably what they used a lot of the 3d to do but if you're watching it 
uh, not in 3D in two dimensions, I guess. Uh, it doesn't like detract from it like uh, other movies, like the fucking that Piranha movie or uh, even like Friday the 13th Part 3. <laughs> so goddamn goofy not watching it in 3D because it's such a like, I don't know, it wears the gimmick on its sleeve. But uh, this one, I, I used to have a TV that did the 3D stuff. Like, uh, this is for whatever reason, this new one I have, it's like a 4K uh sony I forget, I forget like anything else about it it's it's a nice tv but it doesn't do 3d for some reason uh so i didn't get to get to watch it that way but i have seen it at home in 3d and it was like one of the few times where i was like uh 3d is pretty cool and i guess it's if you have everything set up right and you're watching in a dark room it does work at home pretty okay but uh, i'm not gonna go like seek out another fucking tv and the glasses for him just to watch uh, just to watch Dread in 3D, basically. I bet there's a lot of focus on the shattered glass and gunfight things. Yeah. Or, like, uh, like one of my favorite shots in this is when Mama, the main main villain, is, just like, fucked up on the, the made-up slow-motion drug as she's just, like, playing in the water, and it's, like, you can see, you know, little, little sparklies on every little every little drop of water that's going to fly by. I was like, man, I bet that was fucking rad in 3D. Or the, the the part where the guy gets his face shot off and his, like, whole cheek explodes out towards the camera was probably pretty cool in 3D. Speaking of Mama, I think Lena uh, Hetty does a great job in this movie. Yeah. She doesn't have a lot of dialogue, but, man, she has, like, such a great screen presence, and we get some... Uh, like flashback stuff when somebody's explaining who she is at some point that's like genuinely pretty unnerving like she ends up at some point like with all these fucked up like scars all over her face and, uh yeah she plays a good she plays a great villain in this like you're, you're genuinely kind of <laughs> scared for people that cross her path and uh you know aren't, aren't on her good side or whatnot but uh yeah, pretty. There's not much. Again, there's not much to it. She's just uh, she's a typical like. I guess it's basically just like well, it's a bunch of gangs basically that are in this uh, like thousand story fucking skyscraper that like goes on lockdown and shit. And I I think it's explained early on that she basically wiped out all the other gangs and the Mama's gang runs this entire this entire block. But uh, so, yeah, she, she's in the, you know, all, all the typical movie like gangster shit, like dealing drugs and weapons and murdering people. And, uh, she's like, yeah, she's kind of a perfect again. It's all it's all saying something kind of like yeah. Judge Dredd's in here to just like whoop these people's ass. Like the minute he gets there, he yells at a fucking homeless guy who's like threatening to throw him in jail if he's not gone when they come back. Vagrancy. Two weeks. Yep. Was it two weeks at ISO Cube? I think it was like two years or something crazy. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, it's bad, but it's, yeah, being poor. There's a lot more things illegal about being poor or being homeless. Yeah. And yeah, like you were saying, a lot of people, when I don't want to say a lot of people, I'm sure there are plenty of people who totally miss the satire and see it as like copaganda, but they wouldn't call it copaganda. But, you know, it's what I would call copaganda, which is you know, a movie that glorifies a cop abusing the rules and the laws and just fucking people up and saying that that's yeah. a good thing. This is doing it, but with the dread anchor and the comic book anchor, it is exactly what you said. It is a commentary on fascism and giving too much power to police and we'll talk, we can get into that. We can get into it now. We can get into it talking about the movie, but it's really gonna come out in the, the progression of the little timeline that I jotted down. Right. So yeah, it, judge dread, judge Joe dread in this. Uh, and there are a lot more nods. I feel like to the comic book, or maybe I'm just more familiar with the comic book now. But the the chase at the beginning before they get to the final place, uh, it looked like there were some of the people in the car had those wheels that the gang had. Uh, and I forget what part of the comic it is, but there was a gang of people who 
ate too much when food was rationed, and that was like their thing was they got big bellies and wheeled them around on like unicycle type things. <laughs> there was one of those in the car, but f- food rationing was only mandatory for a certain period of time in the world. I think right. uh, shortly after the first global nuclear war. <laughs> uh, Which way, and where does that fall on the timeline? The okay, so you, let's let's do the timeline, and then we can talk about the movie and everything else from there. How's that sound to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so 2023, uh, a year, about a year from when we're recording this, they started building Mega City One around New York City. And then 2028, the U.S. president is elected due to his support for the concept of street level justice and judges. Oh, man, he you know it's coming. <laughs> 20... Well, fucking Kyle Rittenhouse is running all over with a badge. Ugh. Judge Kyle. Oh God. Because <laughs> yeah, that that well, okay. The first judges were deployed in what was in 2031 in still technically a democracy, United States, taken from police officers who were felt to be basic like assholes and harsh the letter of the law there is no flexibility illegal is illegal is illegal right uh 2032 is when mega city one is finished and established uh after at 2039 they have said that the whole experiment because 2031 that was when those judges were deployed so eight years later they say it's a success so they start talking about um building Mega City 2 on the west coast and Mega City 3 which was sort of rooted around Texas okay 2040 to 2047 Mega Cities 2 and 3 are completed and judges have fully replaced police in the Mega Cities so that's when that all 2047 so uh 2023 is when they started building the first city 2047 they have finished the third city, and judges have replaced police. Over, <laughs> over that, after that, for the next 10 years or so, uh, 10, 15 years, basic economic collapse, global catastrophes, global war, but the, not the nuclear war yet. Just fighting and the collapse of society, pretty much. 2066 was when the cloning process that expedited the creation and training of the judges uh, that would create like five years worth of shit in just a couple months. Uh, The one that uh, Judge Dredd and Rico, his brother, came from, that was 2066. That's, I see, I didn't realize that there were, are they all clones or like? No, those are just like the best. I think it's kind of like the stormtroopers. They all started yeah. started out as clones, but then eventually they needed more than they could keep up with. So, and that's probably why, you know, Obi-Wan says, only stormtroopers are this accurate and they can't shoot for shit now. It's because he <laughs> remembers the ones that were created in labs that are like right. the Bad Batch cartoon and shit. And the Clone Wars series. Um, <laughs> ah, that makes sense. That's uh, So... Okay, so that was 2066. 2068, President Booth is elected with the uh, building up people into a fervor with the mantra, the rest of the world is living off America's back. Oh, boy. So, yeah, oh, boy is right. That's very, (laughs) very MAGA-ish. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, 2069, the next year, international relations begin to deteriorate. Maybe we're early. Maybe we're ahead of them <laughs> the in the schedule. timeline. Yeah. It, oh, no. International relations uh, begin to deteriorate after President Booth sends troops to go take all the oil in the Middle East. Uh, Britain is kind of okay with it, or at least doesn't say they're not okay with it, and World War Three starts. <laughs> Sweet. So wait, 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 what year was this? That's 2069. Okay, so about 50 years in the future-ish. 
2070, President Booth, spurred on by MAGA Nation, starts a global nuclear war. <laughs> oh, good. And he says, our cities will protect us and we'll kill everyone else. A ju- the judges talk about confronting him, but they don't. They are sent out to calm things in the riots that take place after the catastrophic nuclear war and people finding out that he rigged the election to stay in power. So the judges go to remove him and arrest him, and that starts a civil war that goes until uh, about the next year or so, because they say the civil war ended in 2071 after Booth is convicted and sentenced to like a hundred something years in a ISO cube. So a future generation can decide his fate. <laughs> right. So 2070 to 2080, there's trying to sort of rebuild society, but there's so much irradiation and uh, 2079 is when the first anti-mutant segregation bill is passed about keeping the bloodlines pure and shit and keeping the mutants out of as much of the mega cities as possible. And uh, what Anderson, who's with Judge Dredd in the movie, might be considered that because she's got psychic abilities. Yeah, some some dude calls her a beauty at some point, referring to her uh, is this is a dude that they have like in handcuffs through like a good chunk of the movie. He's like, oh, so you're a beauty, eh? Yeah. Just kind of yeah. The the <laughs> our our placeholder for uh yeah, just, uh, just marginalized like minority type groups basically uh, in the comics are are all basically all mutants. So those those last for a while it's kind of like the 60s in america or what will happen later if some other fucking guy anyway so from 2083 to 2086 another civil war starts because mega city 3 which is the south thinks mega city 1 and mega i think it's just between mega city 1 and mega city 3 and mega city 2 is kind of taking the side of Mega City 1 from the looks of things, they allow Mega City 3 to secede. Uh, but then two years later, all three of the cities work get together to start a moon colony to sort of try <laughs> to patch shit up. And uh, so that, that I can't wait to get to that part in the comics. 2101, uh, the deputy chief judge... At the time, because uh, they like the chief judge, which is kind of like the chief justice or whatever now, is the most powerful of law enforcement, and it goes down from there. But the deputy chief has the chief judge assassinated and takes over, and Judge Dredd leads a rebellion against him, and uh, some other better liked judge takes over in the aftermath of that. Uh, after the coup is quelled or whatever. 2102, the next year is when Judge Death arrives. And I sort of just, as soon as I saw that bit, I didn't read any more because I just, some dark judge where life is a crime just sounds like a comic book I want to jump into. <laughs> uh, 2104, after poisoning the water supply, in their own mega city, Soviet judges launch another nuclear war, and Dredd and a team of judges fight against a Soviet mega city. And 2105, Mega City 1 has pretty much finished being rebuilt. 2113 is when they start talking the idea rumors, there's a little bit bu- little bit of a buzz about returning some form of democracy. That's kind of where I stopped. It seemed fitting. It seemed enough. Oh boy, yeah, they really, they really called a lot of things. <laughs> yep, we're we're ahead of schedule, I think. 
it's such a commentary on society that I think you have to actively avoid to not notice it. Yeah. Yeah, fuck, like, I don't, I don't even know where to begin with all that information. <laughs> well, just just soak it in, soak it in a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I could rant about the whole uh, militarization of cops in America now. There is Judge Dredd goes into, well, at this point, judges are Judge Judy and Executioner, as uh, <laughs> what's-his-face would say in Hot Fuzz. I don't want to say it's the same, but police do pretty much kill with impunity for the most part here, yeah. here in the States. Uh, not to totally timestamp it, but just a couple days ago, because they this is how they're trained to act, police killed a 14-year-old girl shopping for a dress for her quinceanera when they were going after a... Suspect who, at the most, when he did have his weapon, had a bike chain. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's that's bad police work. Like, I, I read that story, and I still don't understand, like, do they think the girl was the suspect, or were they shooting at the suspect and accidentally hit a girl? Like, that how one. the fuck did yeah. the second one? All yeah, right. they, they, they killed the suspect. And ah. one of the bullets, who... Had attacked people. He had attacked people, but he was not attacking anyone at the time. Right. And the girl, uh, the 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 calls were, people are taking shelter, people are hiding, so they knew that there were people in the building. And the guy comes running in, let me take point, let me take point, I have the rifle. And yeah, uh, just one of the stray bullets went into the dressing room where she was with her mom and killed her. Jesus. Probably won't be any charges because they were mostly following procedure. Yep, which they fucking, this, this happens all the goddamn time. It's really only the last few years that we hear about it, like, considerably more frequently. But, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I feel like it's been like that for quite a while, probably. Uh, uh, There's definitely some fucking shit going on in the UK around around the time the comic was started, I think some, some civil unrest. And, uh, uh, I, I don't know. This is like a couple of years before, like the, the video nasty shit that I talk about every chance I get, including over on the show with Duncan. But, uh, yeah, Mary Whitehouse fucking hated these, these comics. So this was part of her, uh, campaign against, you know, media that's poisoning the minds of the youth. Like, fuck you. This is, <laughs> they're, 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 I think, I think the, I mean, I admittedly haven't read a lot of them, but uh, kind of the gist I got from the documentary watching this is that the early comics definitely uh, have a lot more to say, I think, than most comics coming out at the time. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Can, can you think of anything offhand? I, I wish I would have taken better notes on that documentary. But, uh, like, what the fuck was going on in the UK at this time, like late 70s, early 80s? Well, that was during the reign of Margaret Thatcher, right? Yeah, and the conservative backlash and all that stuff. I know a lot more about what was going on over here. Yeah, and I know that's very American of me, but I also know that the comic is set in America, right? And that it's commentary. It it is a commentary about their own government, but it was commentary on America. I mean, in the well, <laughs> we can go back to when uh, the deterioration of. Castle Doctrine and the beginning of the militarization of police and the la lack of or the deterioration of your rights against no knock raids or, uh, you know, the Fugitive Slave Act. <laughs> we could go back to that maybe a little bit like. The justice system has never really been that just. Yeah. And there was always a slant towards things. Like one of the things that I saw, well, I told you I was going back over some, some things, was under the Fugitive Slave Act, if a judge found for the person accused of being a fugitive slave, which you could just say, that person's my slave, and they ran away. <laughs> if, if they found for the person who was being accused of being the fugitive slave, they were given... Five dollars. But if they found in favor of the person accusing the person of being an escaped slave, 
they were given $10. Oh, no. And <laughs> there's just all these other fucking things. Like, I'll, I'll get really quick to the 70s and 80s when this really got going. But, I mean, in the, in, in the 1700s, I forget exactly when, a person did successfully defend themselves in court killing an officer i forget what they were they were probably called a constable or whatever at that point f- when uh. they invaded their house in a no knock warrant because of the old castle doctrine that usually gets brought up when people are like you can't take my guns but it was most it initially was to protect you from having soldiers or police just barge into your house you know they were supposed to serve warrants or writs uh, during the daylight and they're supposed to announce themselves. And if they didn't announce themselves and you broke into their house or they broke into your house, you could kill them. And everybody's like, well, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? You'd think somebody's attacking you and you have that right. And it's, uh, you know, later on in, in the, uh, fourth amendment against illegal search and seizure and shit. But, okay. So, they really started working on letting police officers be like Judge Dredd around 1970 when they started using no-knock warrants and loopholes around no-knock warrants where yeah, it, initially it was if you could prove that evidence was going to be destroyed, you could sort of do it. But then right. it basically became so you could say you think think the uh, it's it's like now it's like i feared for my life if you think you feared for your life or you think you hear something you can change any sort of warrant to a no knock warrant and that's how people kick in doors and start shooting and they uh, that's how the shootout with the black panthers that you might have seen in the uh the fred hampton movie that's how uh. that got started that's when uh, I think 12, yeah, uh, so it really started ramping up in the 70s with Nixon, who his Justice Department worked towards, they wanted to eliminate attorney client privilege, they wanted to also eliminate uh, doctor patient conf- confidentiality, and talking to priests or clergy. They wanted to be able to use one warrant to search an entire neighborhood. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, um, what else did they want? Uh, the, that's when a lot of the asset forfeiture started getting flexed to, it, it used to be if something was used in a crime, you could take it or the police could take it. And then it gradually became, if you can imagine that maybe they spent some money that they made doing something illegal, you could take everything. Well, yeah, the fucking mafia and all them people had all of nice shit. They're like, we want it. We're going to make it legal to steal it. So, uh, and there was, that's when they were working on uh, changing a lot of the American law. The crime bill, speaking well, we haven't spoke of them yet, but uh, so Nixon was really trying to do all this stuff. And there was always a little bit of pushback from uh, the more reserved people. And then he got in all that deep shit and he couldn't do everything he wanted to. But Reagan was Reagan. And Reagan was like, fuck, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to say it's all about evil drug doers and we're going to seize all the assets where we want to uh, they I think I think both of them tried to eliminate bail and make uh pre pre detention a thing where you could arrest somebody if you think they're going to do a crime oh boy and they wanted to bring in the mandatory minimum sentences and all this other shit and to prove that they they also wanted to fight crime senator joe biden and some of the other democrats 
wrote a crime bill that pretty much gave Reagan everything he wanted. Uh, thanks, Joe Biden. That was kind of when I was like, okay, don't want to bring everybody the crime... down too much. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd heard the crime bill referred to at certain points, like especially leading up to his election here a while ago. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really know what the story on that was. Yeah, so that that was in an attempt to show the scared to death. Well, I mean, they've always been kind of conservative, especially after I, I feel like the 70s was the last time you could claim the Democratic Party might be progressive. Yeah. And then the 80s came in and it was all like, no, I hate crackheads more than you do. And I, I mean, fuck the, oh, the one thing I saw under the the Nixon the Nixon crime bill that he was trying to get through. And that's when the, the DEA was created and all these super powerful government agencies. And when they started removing restrictions on military hardware to police and military involvement in police actions. Like it used to be cut off at, you know, say the Navy could notify the Coast Guard that they saw something suspicious and then now we're at here's tanks, here's rocket launchers. Oh, there there was one uh one the thing about the Black Panthers was the chief wanted to use grenade launchers against them. And everybody said, Oh no, I think you're gonna have to get approval from the president for that. And now it is here is all here are all our old tanks and other military equipment that we get. Eight hundred billion dollars in funding every year for. Speaking of Joe Biden, he he signed one that was more than. More than he even asked for, this yeah. year, and it's an increase from the last couple years, because there's a lot of money in, in that shit. But anyway, sorry, where was I going? Uh, well, I don't know. That that's that's a lot of it. I was thinking about the. Uh... It seems like art like this usually comes out around a, a fair amount of like things to be critical about, and it certainly fucking sounds like it what it did. <laughs> yeah, so they they did that. They they introduced that crime bill, but the the crime bill that Joe Biden often gets tagged or dinged for was the nineteen ninety four one. Ah, uh. and that was. Yeah, I actually wrote this down. The Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act. It was when he was in charge of the Judiciary Committee. Sounds fairly nefarious. Yep. It was 60 new death penalties, 70 enhanced penalties, 100,000 cops, and 125,000 new state prison cells. Tougher prison sentences at the federal Ugh. level encouraged states to do the same. Provided funds for states to build more prisons. Uh, yeah, the 100,000 more police. This was all part of the escalating and the war on drugs. And... So, yeah, there's... <laughs> there's uh, quite, a, quite a lot in there. And Biden was all about it. And I think he says he's proud of it, but he would do something differently now, but... I think for the most part, he's acting the way that most of the people that listen to the show said he would, <laughs> despite the shit that he said when he was running for election. Yeah. Uh. But he is not in the Judge Dredd timeline. <laughs> not we, officially. We don't have to talk about him specifically. We can get back to talking about things that were going on in when this comic came out. But I mean, the, the war on drugs was pretty America, UK, the same. Yeah. And the British government was fighting the IRA. Yeah, there, really, there was that. I'm sure there was a lot more. Well, I mean, it's not like the British police are all happy and handing out flowers nowadays, but the 80s were a crackdown. By the 
people that were tired of being scared of all the crime that they're sure is happening somewhere. So they get more and more power to the judges, the judge dreads, the foot soldiers, the stormtroopers, which ripe for satire. Yeah. I mean, like right down to his costume, I was thinking too, like it's very, uh, like that, that collection and, and a lot of the early art, the, the eyes, the basically like the glint on his, his helmet, uh, where his eyes would be, it looks like fucking SS kind of done, done intentionally. He also has like his giant shoulder pad. That's a fucking Eagle, which, uh, like Eagles obviously have like, which is unfortunate because I'm pretty sure like native Americans probably have a lot of, eagle related imagery in their shit and it was definitely co-opted by you know people like the fucking nazis uh so and uh yeah i don't know the mo- motorcycle is an interesting choice because it's like yeah you'd probably have to figure uh there, there might not be a lot of like uh what you think about like stuff like stuff that cops ride that aren't cars uh you got motorcycles you got bikes and you got horses. There probably are no horses left after a couple nuclear wars. Uh, and, oh, yeah. yeah b- bike Sorry. isn't fast enough, so you got to go with, like, a... I, and I don't know, biker stuff was still, like, fairly... That's uh, the Biker movies stayed relatively popular uh, from, like, the late 60s all through the 70s and early 80s. Like, b- b- biker movies never really went away. I mean, Sons of Anarchy is still fucking huge. Uh, but, yeah, the motorcycle is a nice choice. And uh, Carl Urban says that he insisted on driving it. Which I'm sure is scary for any, like, insurance guy that's on the set. They're like, oh, fuck, I don't know. Like, (laughs) do we want to let our star of our movie on this thing that might fucking crash? Maybe they did all that at the very end. Yeah, that's that's one way of doing it. (laughs) Oh, God, this is getting fucking grim, kind of. (laughs) I fucked myself up. You know, uh, use use the stunt double. <laughs> there, in the can. He does a really, he's such a good Cockney accent in the boys that I forget he's from New Zealand. Right. And in this, his his American accent's pretty good. Uh, well, it's probably one of the easier American accents to copy. Just just talk, just talk like this. Yeah, he just talks like a, a robot Batman or something. Like, hey, rookie. Uh, but he's yeah, like, yeah, he's he's still so great at it. Yeah, there really is a lot to the character, but like he he fills the boots well. He's he's got he's got some presence. Yeah, he's very brooding and tactical. I, I, he he does he reminds me of the Judge Dredd in the comic. Yep. I mean, the, the comic has funny parts, but Judge Dredd, the person, is never humorous. Judge Dredd is a clone out to strictly enforce the law. And he's, I don't know, sometimes, especially as I got older, and I don't try to shit on them and totally overanalyze them, but, you know, movies like Lethal Weapon, there's a lot of abuse of power in those movies. Yep. <laughs> and stuff, and it's made to make it look cool and have everybody be a little bit more fine with it. And this doesn't really have that flavor, even though in it, in it specifically is more removed from the rea- the reality that we have and more of a... I mean, yeah, the... The golden eagle emblazoned judge, jury, and executioner cop with the badass guns that can do everything. And speaking of which, I like we we spoke of Anderson and her psychic ability when she is inside the head of the guy that plays the main character in Paid in Full. I have not seen that one, but oh. continue. Okay. She seems like she implants or lets him go with the concept of taking her gun and using it against her. 
which pays off so so nicely. Yeah, because I was like, he, he mentions that something. He mentions that something that she she'll fail her test because she's like a, she's a rookie, as she's she's being tested this entire time, and he keeps asking her questions and shit. And then yeah, she loses her fucking gun like a little past halfway halfway into the movie. So uh, yeah, I, I just thought that was kind of a a nice nice touch. That, that's where we get a little bit of humanity out of Judge Dredd is towards the end when. He kind of, yeah, he, like you said, he, he lets that slide. She's a pass. <laughs> yeah, it is such a fucking action movie, but in a, this is more of my kind of action movie. Yeah, it's 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 not it's not a dumb action movie. It's definitely got something to say. It's not quite like I, I think it's it, it's it's a lot more subtext than like you're gonna get like out of the well you're gonna get it out of the comics but it's just way more fucking in your face i think than the movie is I, the movie is uh, that stuff's a little bit toned down i think just to be make it a little more palatable to dumb americans that maybe just want to go see a see an action movie where carl urban's a badass dude with a gun that does everything in a cool motorcycle uh which i, I can respect like I, I don't know it, it's it's still there lurking not very deep beneath the surface so, but I mean, the end result is they made a really fucking great movie. Like one of one of my favorite action movies of the last twenty years or so. And they created that drug to use your slow mo cameras, and they just call it slow mo. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun slang in the in the comics for sure, which like it can be it can be a little daunting. Like you kind of just have to go with it. Like I don't, I don't necessarily know what the fuck that means, but okay. Like it's it's not necessary to get get the gist of the story, basically. But, yeah. um, it's like Clockwork Orange. You you yeah. figure it out. But I mean, the movie is pretty straightforward. It is Judge Dredd goes to a building, takes care, and it, it all takes place in one day. And at the very end, he's it's just another day for him. Oh, we we didn't mention the fucking bad judges in this movie, which I had completely forgotten about until this rewatch when they uh, they 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 got the they're, they're they're actual judges, but they're dirty judges, uh, which I think is super. That that's 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 when the the true face of this thing kind of comes out. It's when the dirty cops show up, the like the really dirty cops. They're gonna fucking the the judge dread has to fight because they're so dirty. How much how much does a judge cost these days? <laughs> and I think the gangs that Mama eliminated from the Peach Trees block, which f my understanding is the blocks are all sort of like self-contained. You know, they have hospitals. If a hospital exists, some people never leave those blocks. Yeah. So they kind of faction up and would war against other people. But this one had wars within it but you know they're they don't all have schools but some develop schools because people stuck together might develop a school the people the three gangs that she eliminated i think they were all run by former judges really i think so that's interesting too they, they, they retire from the from the law and go back to doing pretty much the same thing just on the other side yep. with more money yep I think another reason that it moves at such a quick pace is that it gets all of its world building out in an open in an opening monologue where Judge Jared is explaining like how how Mega City One came to be and it, it sets up the world like so perfectly in like such a really short amount of time that like after that you can just get straight to the fucking you know, the Judge Dredd part of it in the story and jump right into it. But uh we have twelve yeah, serious it's, crimes per minute. <laughs> You can only get to this many. I think it was six percent. Yeah, or yeah, six percent sounds about right. <laughs> Which is pitifully, pitifully low considering all the fucking money and terror that is inflicted on society by these people. And they can only solve that many, six percent. Well, you know, police are still largely around to protect property. Like, to me, that's funny, but, like, to somebody that takes law enforcement a little bit more seriously, that might seem like a horribly tragic thing. <laughs> yeah, right. It's such a good satire on the police state. Yep. There's so much of the comic that it could be daunting to start, 
but I, you could jump around in these. You can also do a big deep dive and learn all the shit. I'm sure there. I mean, a couple of the things that I watched were made by people who are really, really big fans. Yeah. And no, Pre- have been for decades. Yeah. But in prepping for this episode, I became more of a fan of the comic and more of a fan of this movie. I didn't dislike it, but I wasn't like, yeah, yeah, fucking awesome. It was one of those movies that I bought. And it's on my shelf somewhere. Yeah, it's it's going to be 10 years old next year. I, I was kind of blown away to see that. I was like, holy shit, that doesn't feel like 10 years ago. That feels like five years ago that it came out. And yeah, sadly, super duper flopped. Like I would have really loved to have seen them continue this and let Carl Urban play Judge Dredd a few more times because uh, this is a this is a hell of a first movie and what could have been like a super badass trilogy. Like maybe part two we get to like Judge Death and part three we get to like you know you could make it a prequel and talk about like the fucking I think the Apocalypse War was like a big storyline that runs through it that kind of explains some of like how the world fell so hard apart but yeah uh yeah i I picked up that for yeah 20 bucks you can get the case files volume one which is a fairly thick graphic novel the other thing to kind of understand about like the way the comics were coming out is that like 2000 ad is a weekly comic but like i'm not sure how how long the weeklies are now but back in the day they were only about six pages and that's how they could crank them out every week and then you'd have your monthly that was like more like a full-sized uh newsstand issue and they they were calling them magazines back then still because comic book was apparently kind of a dirty word uh which you can thank the you know the ec comics stuff of like the late 50s and early 60s is kind of how how that all came about sometimes we'll we'll have to do like tales from the crypt or something and talk about ec comics because that's all super important in how comics were coming out and who like they their target audience became for like a really long time like comics have always kind of been directed at kids but occasionally like it'll come back and be like oh shit here's a bunch of great adult comics and now we're in kind of a golden age where there's like all kinds of like shit for all ages basically i kind of wish i would have discovered judge dread comics in 2080 like when i was a little bit younger because uh yeah now, now i feel like i've got a lot of catching up to do but I feel like the Judge Dread comics are a pretty great place to start. And like I said, for like ten bucks a month, I get like four weekly digital issues of 2080 and the uh, the monthly. And I think they put out like an annual issue towards the end of the year, also. So uh, yeah, the blind cat just came into the office and he's wandering around, oh. uh, kind of aimlessly. What are you doing, bro? I need your attention. I forget what um, the penalty for owning a pet without a license in the Judge Dread <laughs> world. Three is. years of the ISO cubes. Yeah. Are you are you still rolling? I, I could mention the uh, the the skit that we did a couple of years ago, Dread's Court. Yeah, I'm still going. <laughs> so I, I I I have these friends, Mike and Will, that had a YouTube channel for a while called the Mike and Will Show. And that was one of the last skits that I worked on. It was like it was like a sketch comedy kind of kind of thing. And they they did weekly episodes for a while too, and it almost fucking killed all of them. But one of the last ones that I personally worked on, I used to do the music for quite a few episodes, but uh, we did one called Dreads Court because our friend George had a pretty sweet. It's a pretty sweet uh, like Judge Dread cosplay thing that he used to wear to like comic book conventions and stuff. Uh, and I don't know, like, where the idea, I mean, the, the, the idea kind of writes itself as, like, uh, what, what if Judge Dredd had a, like, a judge show, like, Judge Judy, basically. Uh, so the, the, the beginning of it, and, like, I, I'm actually, like, I, I might have to send you the link to this so you can put it in the show notes, because I'm kind of proud of the skit. Uh, the, the first part of it is all ad-libbed. And I play a drug dealer, like I'm buying drugs from somebody and we're supposed to be just like futuristic, uh, like punks, you know, and we, we ad-libbed all these jokes about, uh, like now the, cause the, this was, I want to say this was like 2013 or 2014 when this came out. So it was like right after the, the Carl Urban Dread movie had come out. So we ad-libbed this whole entire fucking scene about, 
uh, if drugs were named after like internet speeds or something. <laughs> and it, it, it all came from like, we're like, well, mom, mom is dead now. So like, the, there's no, no more, no more slow-mo, but I have this other stuff that's like, that's called high speed. And I, yeah, I don't know where the joke came from exactly, but yeah, we just ad libbed this whole thing about, uh, <laughs> <laughs> drugs being named after internet speeds I'm like this is that, that fucking dsl it's probably gonna age like fucking milk when like people don't even get what <laughs> don't even know what dial up internet dial is. Up? yeah uh, but uh yeah and then, and then you know, of course george as judge dread kicks in the fucking door and shoots my friend davis who it was another thing that like we were all still, like talking about at the time when we shot this was like the whole sovereign citizen thing, uh, where people claim to not be members of uh, or citizens of the United States. They're sovereign c- uh, citizens, See, and uh, yeah, taxes judges or follow laws. Yep. Yep. He's like, I know my rights, and yeah, he's he's being being filmed, and yeah, J- Judge Dredd just shoots my friend Davis in the fucking face and takes us other two to off off to Dredd's court. <laughs> And uh, yeah, a lot of it was ad libbed. Like uh, we had like a basic idea of like Judge Red having his own his own court show, and everybody the the sentence is always death for everything. <laughs> yes. uh, the sentence is death. Blam. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to send you a link to that. I, I wrote the music and I did a fun little acting part of that, which I won't totally spoil all the jokes for. Hell yeah, people will be happy to see it. I did oh. want to say uh, before we finish this that I believe the body count for this movie is 102. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Does that count when they break out the fucking Gatling guns and just like demolish the entire floor of the block? <laughs> it's just just because they, they're pretty sure Dread's over there, so. <laughs> He's not dead until you find his body. Because that was probably, uh, that probably contributed to uh, so 20 to 50 people right there, I think. The evil, the bad judges, the the hench person. People getting thrown off balconies is another thing I love in this movie, which I kind of wish I'd seen on a big screen. Like, uh, that's that's always something like, like I feel like people experience it in their dreams at a, at a really young age. Like everybody has those like falling dreams, but like when it's put to film, like it's taken a really long time to like make that look convincing or real. Uh, short of just like throwing a fucking camera off a building and hoping that like the footage is still good when it's there. <laughs> like obviously this one relies on a lot of CGI and stuff, but uh, I don't know, this is done really well. I think this this movie has great fucking special effects. A lot of fun to watch. But, a lot more fun. Than yeah, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's aged really well, and I think will I will always think it's a fucking crime that they didn't make more of these. It's like, well, not exactly the same, but the Golden Compass movie fucking tanked. I think partly because it was marketed so terribly. I don't know if you have seen the the movie or read the books or uh, are familiar not. with the show. Uh, the The book was a three book series called His Dark Materials. And it is largely, I can tell you a lot more about it when we get off the episode. (laughs) And uh, I think it feels like a big turn uh, at the very end of this. It had a lot to say about the oppressiveness of organized religion and the things they'll do to maintain their place in the world. Right. And so the Catholic Church was vastly against it. And other things... The movie tanked. I mean, it had shit. What's his name? The the guy in the Big Lebowski with the mustache, Sam Elliott. Sam oh, Elliott yeah. was was a main character. Uh, Ian McKellen did the voice of this warrior bear. Uh, uh, fuck, fucking James Bond. Uh, what's his name? Craig. Yeah, Daniel Craig was a main character in it. Uh, uh as a guy that. The Magisterium, which the Catholic Church knew was kind of them, was trying to have killed because he could prove that there were, like, alternate universes and stuff. 
and uh it, it's pretty cool the books the books are really uh re- i've said really a lot the the books are a ton of fun the movie was all right uh but it was marketed so poorly it bombed they just started last year or two years ago a series on hbo attempting ah. attempting to do it but uh nicole kidman is in the movie just look up the cast of that movie and wonder why it bombed with with the story that it had. And, and I think a lot of it had to do with there were so many articles about how disrespectful to the church it was, which is kind <laughs> of the the point of it. But yeah, I feel like if I'd seen those, I, I might might have gone out and seen this movie because right? I kind of vaguely remember it coming out. Yeah, it, it was, I thought it was a kids' movie. So, so cool there's a girl there's a bear all right oh uh, yeah uh, and then i checked out the books so it's even better uh if you like fantasy uh type books i do i didn't used to but yeah that's kind of slowly become more of my jam i may actually end up getting around to watching game of thrones at some fucking point since my fiance has been bugging me to do that for four years now oh there you go uh you'll see a lot of lena hetty there yep a lot of fucking every everybody that's in movies right now, like was on Game of Thrones. It feels like everybody. Sean Bean. He's in fucking everything. He is in everything. Yeah, if if you're if you're if I, I would be willing like because I'm definitely gonna keep reading these 2000 AD comics and like try and get through a few uh, Judge Dread uh, the, the the back you know collections of them. Or whatnot. Uh, yeah, at some point, if your other your other person for uh, the the Stallone one falls through, I I would definitely love to come back to the subject and we'll talk about that shitty one and maybe have a little bit more of the the comic stuff under our belt for that one. But yeah, we could always do an addendum, just like, hey, we read some more of the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> back to you know, uh, I, I was telling Duncan that we were gonna do this on an upcoming episode he told me that the baz is a huge 2000 ad fan so oh cool but anyway judge dread you've probably heard about him if you were turned off by the stallone one i can't imagine you having not seen this like it's such a cliche thing to say in a podcast but if you've made it this far and you haven't seen the movie. We spoiled quite a bit of it. But we didn't spoil much of the comic. Go read the comic and watch the movie. It'll be yeah. that's that's a good thing about the simplicity and complexity of it all is we spoiled a bunch of it, but it will not ruin the experience. Yeah, if anything, hopefully it makes you want to go read the comics more hearing us like kind of vaguely touch on it. So uh yeah, that, that's your homework assignment for uh the next a uh, couple months or so is read some more Judge Dread comics and we're we're going to as well. So yeah, that was I think that was the actual end. Yep. That'll yeah. work. So what do we what do we got coming up next on one of these comic book shows? What what do you think? And I, I picked this one definitely because we were gonna roll roll into the chronological Marvel stuff, which like I yeah, now now I kinda wanna jump around. I don't I don't know. And there's so much there's so many non-Marvel and non-DC related comic book movies to talk about. Like I almost like there's a bazillion Marvel and DC podcasts out there. So I, I kind of enjoy like picking some of these ones that maybe people don't think about as much, but uh, whatever you want to do, I, I think you should pick the next one. All right. I will pick the next one, but I'm not going to say what it is right now. That's cool. Because I, I don't want to be, Locked in. I I think I did edit out the last in the last one where we're like, yeah, next month we're definitely doing this because by the time <laughs> I got to editing, we had totally changed our minds. So <laughs> that'll be the the what we will give away is that the next one will be something that I pick, and we will leave you until next time. <laughs> I am the law. I am the law. <laughs> Two years in an ISO cube. Yep. Listen to the Psycho Semantic cast. That's 10 years in an ISO cube. Minimum. <laughs> Broadcasting once again from the cursed earth. Signing out. 
He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Yep. And cover.